This cab cam series brought to you by folks at Precision Agro Services. More information at precisionagroservices.com. Joel Benor would here for the Ohio Ag Net. We're harvesting corn, and you know what? If you're from Ohio, you're watching this, you're probably been through or at least walked right beside this field that we're harvesting right now because we're at the farm science review right ahead of the review and we're joined in the cab or at least letting us join them in the cab Nate Doradis he's the manager Molly Garrett Ag Center farm manager over this way Nate thank you so much for being here with us let's talk about this year how's harvest going good we're happy to be in the field we kind of had a slow soft start last week and uh just trying to keep our progress steady here. We've been in both corn and beans and we're back into some corn today. This field that we're in will actually get uh, harvested before the show. This is where you'll see the tillage demonstrations on Tuesday, next week. So all kinds of fun things. Before we get a little bit more of what we've seen in the fields this year, what to expect from the show, what is it like farming around a farm show? Um, we have our challenges for sure. Uh, we have a unique set of uh, dates that we like to work around starting with harvest because of the show you know and, and our show dates are predicted several years in advance uh, always being the third week of September we can kind of work backwards with uh, corn and soybean maturities we know what planting date will suit those so that we can get them mature and harvested in early September so that um, we try to minimize how much wet corn we'd have to deal with and make sure we've got fields opened up for a successful field demonstration at the show. And as you've been getting fields opened up, do some pretty cool stuff ahead of the review. What have you been seeing as far as uh, bushels and, and how dry has it been down here? Let's stuff, jump on that as well. Yeah, we, um, I, I think we were really a bit scared, to be honest, of, of how bad some of these fields could be. And um, as we get across a few more acres each day, uh, it's just amazing what these hybrids can do and how our soil types vary. It's, it's basically going to be a year of the, the dark, high organic matter soils and the lighter soils. Right, That's what your yield maps are going to be at the end of the season. So we have actually been a little bit surprised. The yields are just slightly better than we have expected. Um, but we're dealing this year, this season, with about half as much rainfall as we would normally expect. Uh, we've, we talked about it earlier, but in comparison, 2020 was a pretty bad drought for us um, and, and locally only second to the drought of 2012 which everybody experienced so um, I really we're gonna we're gonna go come into this thing with field demos um, the, the demo corn being a 96 day hybrid this year uh, we would expect about 175 bushel average which is just slightly better than what we thought yes and while prices could be higher it's interesting right before the interview began here I said Hey, where where does this grain go? And you're talking about uh, actually a lot of it stays inside the Ohio State system. Yeah, corn specifically, we um, we we support our uh, animal operations within the college, and uh, we we actually have our own feed mill up in Worcester, and uh, about half of the corn produced at Molly Cairn will work its way into that system. So it's a great way to uh, demonstrate our internal supply chain and the way we can work together across our other uh, statewide campuses. And as we're unloading kind of this first load of corn here for what I've been in the cab, uh, let's talk about some of the equipment we're running out here. You guys have a nice opportunity to get to see some of the, and use some of the best equipment and at the leading, cutting, leading edge of the industry. Yeah, we're, we're fortunate to be supported locally with Agfro uh, through John Deere. And that dealership has uh, been a strong partnership with us. You know, there's things that we use today with, on the technology side that we just kind of demonstrated and were brand new a few years ago that we kind of wonder how we could deal without them. And that's everything from all the header automation to the machine sync with the grain cart. That, um, that really takes some of the stress off the operators. For me, for example, you know, we can, we can just uh, we get into our rhythm and don't have to focus so much on all those little fine details. And at the end of the day, it makes it for a more comfortable day. And as we talk about looking ahead to the future of technology, things that will be implemented as regular pieces of the farming operation in the next couple years, no better place to see that than Farm Science Review. What are some things that you're particularly interested in seeing folks come out and see themselves, maybe that you all have been working behind the scenes on here at the farm? Yeah, we just mentioned our partnerships with Agro at John Deere. 
and that included a sea and spray ultimate sprayer this year on the farm so there were a, a few of those machines actually out this year across the state we were fortunate to have one here so all of the acres uh, corn and soybeans got some kind of application through that targeted spray which is what that sea and spray machine can do so essentially we, we come into a field and rather than broadcast that that application on every acre uh, we let the camera system do its thing and we target spray anywhere that we see the weed and um, you know you can come out to come out next week during the show and you can walk and see those fields um, but we will also be having that sprayer uh, as one of the demonstrations each day so at 12 30 you can make your way towards the ag innovation area and you can see that sprayer up close and you can see it do a demonstration um, they'll actually be just applying water but uh, yeah, that's a great way to experience one of these new segments of technology. Uh, we were happy to be able to be uh, one of the first to kind of launch that in our area. And at the end of the day, we're, you know, we're trying to gain information so that AgPro can help promote that um, to their growers. And um, you know, we, we're learning from it as well. We can help promote the technology and figure out how it's gonna work on your farm. Absolutely, and then there's the question of how many more years will we be actually sitting in the cab for these cab cams? There's, I hear a couple autonomous demonstrations coming as well. Yeah, again, the uh, and, and as in recent years, the, the ag innovation area uh, is kind of been a, a real hot spot of things. Everything from uh, the drones and the spray drones to now the autonomous equipment. So we'll have two tractors this year and a, a third piece, which is the autonomous irrigator. Um, if you did not stop out last year, we had an autonomous tractor uh, running each day. Uh, this year that's expanded to two from two different companies. We'll make sure you see that, a uh, very different style um, than what we're accustomed to. So spend some time there, watch it, see it for yourself firsthand. It's much different than watching it on a video on YouTube and, you know, from your device. Um, with that, we've got uh, an autonomous irrigator that's been running here on the farm for two years from a large scale research project. And uh, the, the team makes that available as a demonstration so you can walk up firsthand and see what that uh, irrigation potential looks like. There's no cab on it essentially. Um, it, it's fully autonomous. And uh, this is a year where we think we're gonna have a, a great uh, understanding of what the capabilities are to applying irrigation to um, row crop fields in Ohio. So stay tuned for that. That information will be released at the end of the, the season um, in our eFields publication. So that, that will be the first place you can see some of that research. A lot of very exciting things for the world of agriculture here happening at the Molly Garen Agricultural Center. And Nate, this past year, it's hard to believe it was just earlier this year that a tornado came through this area. Major damage to some of the exhibit area at Farm Science Review. But folks encouraged to come out and see the rebuilding that's gone on. What are they going to see? Yeah, it's um, it seems like it's been a ways behind us. The morning of February 28th, uh, around 5 o'clock in the morning, we had the tornado that came through here. And uh, while it was a very narrow band, it was focused uh, on our footprint right through the middle of the exhibit area that you're all familiar with. Um, everything from, you know, minor superficial damage to uh, total building loss. Uh, for example, the Ohio Rural Electric Cooperatives building uh, was totally removed from its foundation and spread it clear across the parking lot and adjacent field that we have um, east there. So everything in between, um, it's been a slow start just because um, you know we're trying to follow the right path to get things rebuilt, but uh, there has been incredible resources put in place and uh, like I said, Rural Electric Co-op building has a brand new building today. Uh, in many cases, you'll see a, a tent has been put up there, or we've just kind of rearranged the way we are, we are uh, showcasing things for this year. So certainly more to come. Can't can't recover from it all in one year, but um, you know, if you didn't know that there was a tornado, I would I would say that there's many people that will walk through there that, that won't be able to tell a difference. So so much you can see. Um, I I would challenge that you can't see it all in one day. So make plans to come for more than one. It's a cab cam and farm science review visitor's guide all in one here in the cab with Nate Dorado, the Molly Karen Ag Center, home of the farm science review. 
and we'll be out there as well. Come stop by and see us in the Red Barn with the folks at Ohio Agnet and Ohio's Country Journal. And also stop by and, and see the sponsors of this video, Precision Agri Services. More information from them at precisionagriservices.com. They'll also be here at Farm Science Review. So thanks for joining us out here for this corn harvest ahead of Farm Science Review at the Molly Karen Ag Center just outside of London. I'm Joel Penorwood. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This Habcam series is made possible by Precision Agri-Services, Inc. Since 1994, Precision Agri-Services, Inc. has provided the best agronomic, environmental, ag technology, planter services, and planter products to farmers and agribusinesses. For more info, visit precisionagriservices.com.